At London Financial Studies, we focus exclusively on capital markets. Our programs offer practical learning to professionals from all over the world. It's a pleasure to be here and to talk about uh, convertible bonds and hybrids, my favorite asset class. I'm going to discuss in general valuation, how the market looks like, and the risk management actually and portfolio management of this particular asset class. It's a very broad topic. Um, we go from cocoa bonds, contingent convertibles, but yet the blend of these two relatively vanilla asset classes leads to a complex product, hybrids. On one hand, you have debt, which has a fixed maturity, which is paying fixed coupons. On the other hand, you have fixed... I try to put down a little schedule that is showing how the life of a cocoa bond looks like. On the bottom, on the horizontal axis, you have the fact that this instrument is paying coupons, nice and easily and steady, till the final maturity date, till redemption. But in a distress situation, two things can happen. Dropping below a particular um, share price level S star, which we call the trigger level. That's what we're going to do in this particular approach. Well, these things can be modeled. In a Black-Scholes world, there is even a closed form formula that will tell you if you have, you have, if you have a share price S. This chart is summarizing 25 years of history of returns price returns that we've seen for government bonds, equity, and convertibles. On the horizontal axis, now we're drifting steadily into the valuation concept here. If I would look at the issue date, this underlying shares had a certain level. They were trading at 26 South African rand, czar, and the bond was issued par 100. So on the vertical axis, I'm having my bond. On the horizontal axis, I'm having my share price. And the combination 100 issue price and actually my share price 26, that gives you a point, which I put that on the chart. That's where the whole story starts. That's the situation at issue date. So bond floor and parity line constitute two boundary levels. And I know that my real price curve has to be above. And this is actually what you do in the valuation model for converter bonds. You're trying to figure out this line. And so the black line there is my price curve. It's a theoretical curve that gives you theoretical movements of the convertible bond price for changing share prices, in this case for Steinhoff. So building a model is exactly trying to make a model for this black line. Convertible bond is, uh, is an asset class where you use a lot of terms. This has this a convert is an instrument, and I've, we, we show you the valuation. You had this, this line, the price line, we had, which has a lower boundary, the bond floor. It had a different lower, uh, lower boundary called the parity, but it's a theoretical price. Most of our trading systems that we see are in using a fit a difference approach and implementing jump diffusion. It's a fast, you have very quickly a price. If you really want to be very precise, what is, according to you, the biggest risk in convertible bond investing? For me, the biggest risk in investing in convertible bonds is, for me, without any doubt, liquidity. Uh, look at it from this point of view. Uh, Basel III means a strict regulation of financial markets. The fallout has been Dodd-Frank in the US, has been CD4 in Europe. So there's less inventory investing.